selection of Jorge Bergoglio, which must be considered valid until the Church says otherwise, has not produced a real Pope. A papal election to be properly accepted requires the intention on the part of the elect to fulfill the essential obligations attached to the papal office. The Pope must guard the deposit of faith. The Pope must teach the Catholic religion. The Pope must promulgate liturgical and disciplinary laws which are pleasing to God and are conducive to eternal salvation. Ecclesiastical authority or jurisdiction is the power of governing and leading the faithful towards the goal of eternal life. If a person is elected to the papacy but refuses to govern the church in the way intended by Christ, but on the contrary intends to impose what is essentially a false religion upon the church, the election of such a person does not and cannot produce a real pope until this voluntary obstacle is removed. There is a threefold apostolicity. Apostolicity of orders, this is preserved by valid orders. Apostolicity of jurisdiction, this is preserved by the succession of popes and when the see is vacant, by the College of Cardinals, which is able to elect the next pope. Apostolicity of doctrine, this is preserved by the authentic teaching of the pope via his ordinary or his extraordinary magisterium. The apostolicity of the jurisdiction means nothing without apostolicity of doctrine. Papal power is essentially ordered to the truth. There is only one way to explain apostolicity today. By recognizing the formal vacancy of the See of Peter, Vatican II errors did not proceed from real authority, therefore continuity and apostolicity of doctrine are preserved. Elections continue to be valid, since elections are still able to produce a pope, continuity and apostolicity of jurisdiction are preserved to this day. <laughs> 